What do I mean by the 2400 SAT and 36 ACT edge? That's what I'm going to explain in this video. So the basic idea is in order to get a 2400 on the current SAT or 1600 on the new SAT or 36 on the ACT, what you have to begin to appreciate are the small edges, the small habits, the small strategies, the small frames of mind that may not seem very significant and may seem like something you could overlook or not pay much attention to, but actually have a huge impact on your chances of getting that perfect score. They really do make all the difference at that top level, at that top percentile. And how I'm going to illustrate this is by using a binomial distribution calculator. So the link is here. It's also in the description if you want to check this out and play with it yourself. But what this calculator does is it calculates and graphs for you uh, what's called a binomial distribution. And this is not on the SAT, so you don't have to worry about it in that way. It's maybe something you learned in Algebra 2. But a binomial distribution is basically when you have an event that can have two outcomes. So for example, a coin flip, head or tail, or in this case on the SAT, a right or wrong question, right or wrong answer to a question. You can kind of, with this binomial distribution, graph out all the probabilities for a certain number of outcomes occurring. And I'll explain more in the context of the SAT in a second so it's clear. Um, so we're basing this on a 54 question math SAT. You could also base this on uh, any other section on the SAT or on the ACT. And there's a few assumptions that we're making here. I'm not a master statistician, so maybe there's some other assumptions and other things that make this a bit more complicated, but we're just want a simple model. And the assumptions are one, all questions are independent. So you can treat all 54 questions as their own entity. They do not, your answer to one question doesn't affect your answer to another, for example. We assume all questions are equal difficulty, which of course is not true, but we're just assuming it to make the math easy. And we're assuming no one quarter penalty. So because there is a minus one quarter penalty for getting questions wrong, your probabilities of getting the scores shown that we're going to talk about in a second are actually lower because you're going to uh, get fewer questions right due to this minus one quarter penalty, which will take away uh, from your overall raw score. So these are some assumptions, but let's get into it. So what is this binomial distribution? So we're assuming n equals 54, so that's the number of questions in the math section, and p is the probability that you get the question right. So let's say that your probability for getting a given question in the math section right is 95%. That's what this means, 95%. What this calculator will do is graph out the probabilities for what you would get on average if you took the test you know, an infinite number of times, how many you would get right and with what probabilities. So notice, for example, 52 correct is the highest probability. So it's about a, let's see, what's the actual number? It is a 25% chance. So you have a 25% chance of getting a 52. This right here tells you the average so if you have a 95% accuracy, your average score will be a 51. Again, keeping all these assumptions in mind. So think about that for a second. If you get 19 out of 20 questions right, you are most likely to get a 52, and on average, your score would be a 51. So it's very interesting to think about it that way, that with a 95% accuracy, you're still doing pretty well, but your chances of getting a 54, or, or yeah, a perfect score, an 800, are only 6%, so it's not that much. Let's up the ante. Let's go to a 97% accuracy rate. What happens now? Well, suddenly we can see the distribution is curving more towards the top, which is what you expect. You'd expect to get more right on average. Uh, here, the peak is at 53, so that's 32%, and your chances of getting a 54 are now 19%. Notice your average is around a 52 still. So even if you're 97% accurate, you are most likely to get a 53. And on average, you're going to get a 52.38, right? But a 52. So even if you're 97% accurate, your chances of getting a 54 are only 19%. Let's up the ante one more time. And you again, you can go to the link in the description and play with it yourself. Uh, if you're 99% accurate, so you only get one out of 100 math questions wrong on average, your chances of getting a 54 are the highest. Notice it's the highest peak, but they're still only 58%. I mean, again, we have a lot of assumptions here, but let that sink in. If you are 99% accurate, your chances of getting a, 50, uh, a perfect score are only 58%. I mean, it's still good, but it's basically a coin flip. So kind of amazing when you think about it that way. 
So what are the lessons we can take from this? Well, there's two lessons. Number one, luck. Luck really matters. You, the luck of the draw, the luck of the questions that you're given on that day make a pretty big difference for you. This is why it's important to take the test more than once. Take test. And a lot of you probably know this. It's kind of intuitive and obvious. But this kind of shows you why. You need to get as many chances to hit your top end of the distribution as possible, right? On any given test, maybe you just have a bad day, you end up in this lower end, right? So if you're uh, a 97 percenter, you with a 2% chance could still get a 49, which isn't a bad score. It's just not what you would have probably expected, right? Because that's quite low on your distribution. Distribution. So luck really matters. You want to take it more than once, of course. But the most important lesson is that kind of where I started the video, the small edge percentage matters more than you'd think. And let me show you how this makes uh, really makes it vivid. If you have a 97% accuracy, from our data above, we saw that you have a 19% chance at a 54. If you are 99% more accurate, or 99% accurate, that leads you to a 58% chance at a 54. So notice this is a three times difference for a 2% increase in your accuracy, right? So if your accuracy goes up just a small bit from 97 to 99, you have tripled your chances at a 54. This is the small edge in action. So how do you increase your accuracy from 97 to 99 or from 95 to 97 or whatever the case may be, wherever you're at, right? If you're not close to an 800 right now, this still applies to you. You just have bigger percentages to make up. Maybe you're only 80% accurate or 85% accurate. Still, how do we increase this percentage? And especially when you're at this top level, how do you increase this percentage? Well, this is where the details matter. This is what's going to separate you. That 2% is what's going to separate you from the rest of the pack and get you that top, you know, 836, whatever the case may be, score. And here are a few things. Obviously, these are very general, and these are things that I show all the time in the videos and my courses, but just to give you an idea of the kinds of things you have to pay attention to. One, ways to check your work. So if during the section, you can recheck your work, check your answers as you go. If you have time at the end to check your answers, that increases the chances that you won't make a silly mistake and that you will then get the question right. Another thing would be strategies and efficiencies. So sure, you might know how to solve a problem one way. But if you know how to solve a problem two ways or three ways or four ways, and if you know the fastest ways to solve problems, that increases your percent chance, right? Even if you know how to do a question, knowing how to do it better gives you that 2% edge, right? Gives you that whatever percent edge. So the lesson here is just because you know how, know how to do a question right, just because you know how to do a question at all, doesn't mean you have fully maximized your ability with that question type. Uh, the... Uh, next bit uh, is small habits that may seem insignificant. So, for example, in the reading section, if you do not cross off answer choices, if you just look for the answer and you circle it and then you go to your little bubble sheet and bubble in, right? If you got your A, B, C, D, E, and you do not cross off choices as you evaluate them and narrow down, if you not do that practice, I guarantee you, you are not operating at your highest percentage. There are leaks in your strategy. There are leaks in your approach that are not to your benefit. And then finally, cleaning up small gaps in your knowledge, in your abilities. So this is about ruthlessly eliminating weaknesses. If there's something you don't know, even if you're a 750 plus score, if there's one thing you don't know, you have to clean that up because that's a leak in your game. That is a small percentage decrease in your accuracy. If there's some fact you don't know for grammar or some rule, or if there's some vocabulary words that appear a lot in the test, you don't know them, whatever the case may be, you have to be ruthless in eliminating your weaknesses. We already talked about how you can improve on your strengths, right? Just because you get a question right doesn't mean you can't improve. Obviously, if you have weaknesses, things you don't know, those are absolutely critical to cleaning up that last 
So that's the basic idea here. And again, you can play with this calculator yourself, see what happens if you change the percentages. And it's pretty interesting to see. Really, it comes down to these small percentage differences. And the more you can focus on the details, the better likely you are to get that 2400 or that 36. To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com slash enroll. And you can find the link in the description below the video.